for the opportunity. Um, so hello everyone, very good morning, good afternoon, and good evening if you're joining from different regions. Um, so this is uh, going to be a very interesting uh, webinar, uh, more like a, you know tech um, technical webinar for all of us. Uh, we would be making it more interactive, as Vivek said. Like uh, we wanted to ensure that it is not just a delivery of webinar, but also an interactive session. And uh, let's also talk through uh, this webinar um, and interact throughout the webinar, right? So we can make the session interactive and and uh, more interesting. All right. So uh, about uh, LLM agents, I will come to that. Uh, uh, let's quickly, uh, you know, uh, introduce uh, about the Cellstrat and about me. So uh, Cellstrat is a, uh, you know, AI lab uh, community and is and the product company now. And we are actually developing a lot of LLM based products, Gen AI solutions. We also have a great a platform uh, from like three, four years, uh, which is Cellstrat Hub. I mean, some of you already know about it. Uh, and uh, we are doing it. Yeah, sorry. And we are growing the community uh, for uh, these you know, platforms. Um, about uh, me, I have around 13 plus years of experience, uh, everyone. And uh, I have done, uh, I have worked on different uh, fields like data engineering, data science, and data analytics. I have also experience uh, in a lot of uh, you know, technologies such as big data, Hadoop, Kafka, Spark, um in data science uh nlp especially nlp uh you know uh, transformers bird um l bird i have started in 2018 onwards and uh i got into deep uh into the deep learning space and i uh, worked on a lot of uh, text analytics uh, solutions speech to text and uh, also in now into llms and rag based solutions so we are working and sell strat for different uh, clients for you know providing solutions in rag architecture solutions and as we also building the products in the in sell strat which is kind of a um, uh, you know solution that we are building for pdf uh, excel uh, image as well as we are also we also have a new uh, you know product called cellbot which is more like a pubmed uh, data extraction and and you know conversation with it we are expanding the product and the features uh, along but that's a quick background about uh, cell strat and um, any questions uh, anyone okay so uh, we are definitely um, um, while we are focusing on the product side uh, and as a community we also feel uh, a lot of uh, the folks that re they reach out to us, uh, you know, asking for if there are any courses or any learnings that are happening. While webinars are more deep tech, uh, they are kind of expecting you to already know about uh, L LLMs and also know about the advanced features of that. Um, the generative AI and the basic fundamentals of that still remains kind of great, right? So uh, we plan to, uh, you know, launch a, a course which is you can say like uh, you know almost a free course it's we are doing it live uh, if you just need the notebooks or you know in the slides and the and and code etc then you are paying 100 dollar for it which is nominal you know gen ai courses are like selling a, a, like a hot cake in the market if you see the big tech companies but our primary goal is to uh, empower our uh, you know learners and the community members uh, with the amount of you know, deep understanding about Gen AI. And that's the primary motive that we have launched uh, this course. Uh, so uh, if anyone is uh, like, you know, trying to get into Gen AI or trying to understand the fundamentals of Gen AI, that this course would be really great because um, we are kind of focusing on the learning aspects and, uh, you know, rather than spending time about talking about Gen AI. So as you already been aware of Cellstrat um, as a AI, uh, community so our goal is to you know make things uh, available to all the community members so that's a quick uh, you know announcement to all of uh, us here um all right so uh, let's get into the webinar today which is which is basically about the llm agents uh before i get into it uh 
I just could quickly set the expectations for all of us that this uh, webinar is going to be a little bit uh, in depth. Uh, if you have some experience with prompt engineering or LLMs, this would be um, otherwise you may need to uh, recheck those and how you know things works in the LLM space because I'm not going to uh, deep dive into LLM and the fundamentals of LLMs. But yes, if you have any questions, you can always feel free to ask. Okay, Amal, uh, Amol is asking, do we have course in offline mode in Mumbai? Uh, no, no, not as of now, Amol. Uh, if it is Bangalore, we do sometimes uh, webinar, uh, offline webinars, but uh, or hackathons, but no courses as an offline. I mean, we are originally we are not uh, really a course creator, but uh, we we are trying to bridge the gap between the knowledge and what we have. Yeah. So we are undertaking corporate trainings uh, across India or abroad, uh, yeah. you know, with specific contract uh, co corporate engagements. Yes, yes, that maybe Vivek, you can give more details. Yeah. All right, so let's get started. Um, what are we uh, doing at with LLM agents, right? So, uh, anyone have any understanding about agents or? have worked with agents. So uh, I kind of expect that, let's say no understanding of agents, because we are going to deep dive into that. Uh, agents or LLM agents are more like, you know, I would say a tool um, or a combination of tools that are being used by these agents to, uh, you know, in a, in a particular environment in some way, like let's say we are talking about uh, you know, computer or web browser or other agents, which is in the environment, right? And via tools such as terminal, um, it can be an API call or, uh, you know, uh, so if you are using some environment like web browser, let's say I have a web browser and uh, from web browser, I want to get some data. I also have some database. I want to combine that information. I want to also give some human input, right? this input is going combined with that to LLM. So if, if you're not speaking, kindly put yourself on mute. Thank you. Yeah, so this input uh, from DB and the uh, web browser is going inside uh, with an uh, human input and that's going with the uh, with to the LLM. Now we are talking about these different type of um, environments and different type of tools that we can combine and uh, towards some goal. So let's say my goal is to automate the flight booking process, or maybe I want to automate uh, the, let's say searching some, let's say you are searching for an umbrella in Amazon and you want to automate that process. So you voice, you give a voice command like book an umbrella for me, which is much more easier task than I would say, um, than actually thinking on this because but let's say if it, you say that search a best umbrella for me uh, and you you do not give any specific recommendation like red or blue or whatever color or size nothing right so it's going to search the best umbrella based on your profile and that profile details you give somewhere and it understands okay you may like this kind of umbrella and going to search that umbrella uh, throughout the web going to give you uh, the list of umbrellas and the top umbrella it's going to select and then it's going to order it uh, charge from your card and place the whole uh, you know order process so this is kind of a, a workflow that we are talking about uh, and this is very sim let's say simple workflow now but we can actually make a very complex agentic workflows using these llm agents and we can actually use multiple agents to do this kind of work Okay, so this is kind of bringing in a lot of uh, automation here, um, which is um, definitely, uh, kind of, uh, you know, as a human, uh, you might feel a little bit concerning, but I, I, I believe that they are still at the level that, um, you know, we, we kind of, as a human can do far better than those agents. But yes, in the future, uh, we might be using a lot of agents to do a lot of small or tiny tasks, combine that into a bigger task, then I think we can 
see this is uh, adding a significant difference. So can I assume uh, uh, Google Voice or Alexa kind of applications as LLM agents? Yeah, 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 absolutely, yes. So they are okay. like a small level uh, uh, agents, Siri, Chad, uh, or Google Play, whatever. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yes, any questions? OK. So uh, what are the components of uh, LLM agents? Primarily, LLM agents are combined with LLM, the, the main tool that is the base of it, right? Because uh, LLMs are the one that is giving all the information or all the memory uh, information related to the knowledge that is extracted from the internet. And uh, you also have a memory where you may store, let's say maybe I, we can use a Redis cache uh, for storing some amount of memory, which is maybe you need immediately or you, have, you need to have the amount of information that we can store in memory. And we can also have the other type of uh, component that is planning skills right so let's say i want you to provide a specific plan to the agent that if this happens then you do this if this happens then you do this or if this happens then you do this right we can have a step-by-step -step plans for the agents to uh, guide through the you know process of coming out with the with some kind of responses okay yeah so yeah, just a moment, guys. I have someone I told. <laughs> so, you know, uh, this is Vivek from Cellstrat. So we are implementing agents, right, for multiple clients. Uh, so uh, basically, this is becoming the new way of uh, doing workflow orchestration uh, for business workflows or uh, enterprise workflows. OK, so what do you envision? Yeah, correct. Vivek. So, yeah. So, so in, yeah. So in the, I understand. So basically, it's a set of if then else statement, right? Uh, to orchestrate a workflow. That's what an agent is, or it's something like we have in uh, reinforcement learning. You know, where the agent actually learns itself and it's you know, something actively you know involved a component. So yeah. I'm so really actually, yeah. you're right to some extent, but uh, if then else is more like a I would say it's a, it's a simple logic, right? Mm -hmm. There is not uh, much that you can do as a program. Uh, you might, might build something, but can, you, uh, can I assume uh, RPA, robotic process automation, that uh, automation testing uses as a kind of LMA, LLM agent? We can't say that as well because I'll tell you. So LLM agents, uh, the RPA is what that like. Let's say you provide a website, it's going to scrap it, right? It doesn't understand it what it is doing it's just uh, kind of in process that it it you automated it so that it scraps the data from it or you might bring intelligence for that you need llm so, so they don't have generative capability that's what you want correct to say. they don't have generative capability they don't have understanding capability both are correct. not there Got same it. thing with the efs logic right we don't have that in efs also we don't have an uh, intelligence or kind of an understanding capability, correct? So we are combining, let's say, all of these, the efls logic, the extraction from web, maybe extraction from database, maybe extraction or maybe some human inputs, right? All of these, if you can combine, and along with that, you give a, you give a pipeline. That means you you give, let's say, create a uh, create a uh, weekly plan for my routine you know so you might give some steps that this is what you do generally and uh, based on that you feed into the llm because llms are going to do this and uh, you might have multiple llms to do multiple orchestration workflow orchestration and then finally you come up with some results this is what is uh, agentic workflow. I mean, I would say like this is more uh, complex than what we think. I mean, because it can do a lot of stuff uh, and we have kind of used it in our, some of our, you know, uh, client uh, projects as I was mentioning in last uh, webinar as well. Uh, these agents are 
kind of you know um, if you see that you know general agents or there are different type of agents we can actually use tools so i'll go in deep little bit later on mm -hmm. so let's say we can use tools so i can use uh, let's say sql query tool okay sql query tool uh, yeah uh, just one question i have uh, like sorry for interruption so uh, what my understanding about agent is uh, like it's like extension of llm model like basically llm do in general so all most of the stuff and then we can train specific area let's say i have to train for my organization policy i can train mm -hmm. that i mean create agent which is trained for specific for my company or organization policy and that's again used by my organization employees and everybody's right like right. specific purpose and with train specific data actually in addition to the llm what supports it all right it's kind of extension of llm we can say that way yeah we can say extension all of these are true i mean the extension of llm somebody said rpa somebody said it is a sales logic right sales logic so let's right. say if we combine all of that how about combining all of that right we did not uh, i mean earlier what used to happen like you either you do rpa or either you do llm prompting or either do a sales logic but how about combining uh in your you know in your logic flow you are combining an complex uh, logic that is going to be uh, you know passed to the llm yeah so um i would say like all the things that we used to do with uh, uh, you know normal software engineering world uh, you know extracting data from databases uh, searching let's say using web search and that combine that result and give it or probably produce that result so there is no intelligence in that whatever you do in the rule that's what is going to happen yes nirish yeah no actually so uh, are we going to see implementation uh, details also how do we implement are we going to see that today in some code or something yeah yeah, oh. yeah. Okay, yeah. great <laughs> okay then i will I'm not have going. anything just theoretical obviously i okay. <laughs> prefer to have some demonstration so that that feels like yeah we did understand something Great. Okay. Yeah, we used to work on enterprise application integration or EAI software, like right? TIBCO or you know uh, uh, WebSphere, web logic based EAI, enterprise service bus. So that uh, job was to integrate uh, multiple systems and create workflows uh, for. Right. So I guess uh, that will now be merged with you know LLM intelligence uh, for cognitive you know workflows mm -hmm. instead of rules based workflows. So that's what I'm I'm assuming a future is coming. Okay. Yeah, there are a lot of uh, already a lot of startups uh, are coming up on this, uh, you know, generation of this kind of uh, agentic workflows. So, uh, um, I mean, I'll summarize it just to understand that this multi agent thing that could be, you know, in, in RPA world, uh, did we have something like, you know, talking to RPA communications? We generally don't. I mean, we combine the results. But I, as I said, like there is no, uh, not much intelligence involved in that. So let's say if I if I combine, let's say I have uh, you know two agents. Something like that. And let's say these are multi-agent. Okay, this is a multi-agent architecture. Where uh, this could be a student and this could be a teacher you know a teacher has more knowledge about how let's say maybe it knows how to do a calculation a plus b student doesn't know so it tells a, a student that how a plus b can be added and it gives an example also it feeds an example to the student student understand the example along with how to calculate a and b and it gives the response maybe to a third party right so we can actually do this kind of stuff, just an example. But now let's expand this. So let's say I have this multi-agent architecture, which is more like you know communication between two uh, agents or multiple agents. And uh, I will say this as a multi-agent. And there is a communication happening between these two agents. Yeah. Now, all of these two agents, they can be, again, uh, they can be again linked to different things like mm, this uh, agent has a different planning, you know. 
different planning architecture. This also has a different planning architecture. It does its own sort of task. And this also has a different uh, wave navigation, you know. So it can search for something. This agent can also search for something. OK. And now let's say this has some kind of tool uses. So you probably equip these uh, agents with some kind of tools, like let's say Python uh, uh, programmer, or maybe SQL executor, or maybe a regex uh, pattern executor, something like that. And this will create a, you know, a statement of uh, a general purpose uh, kind of uh, task, like we can say SOP. Uh, which is the standard operation process and it will generate the whole standard operation process and this would be let's say given as an as an uh, you know interaction to the human so let's say i have an interface where the human agent interaction happens human agent interaction happens yeah so we can actually create like that, we can create thousands of agent uh, uh, human communication, and we can expand it as as we go. So you can imagine that RPA or um, you know simple logics are not really that that great like how we are doing here. Yes, Vignan. Yeah, I, I see. This is like more of uh, you know API calling or you know functions or classes being written differently. You know, you know all the planning or tools or web navigation and all. Mm. But what intelligence it is adding? Maybe are you saying that every action, maybe you know uh, every function or every yeah. API which you're using, yeah. which you call an agent, is having LLM integration? That is the only yeah. thing, or yes, everything has an LLM. Basically, yeah, basically it is just like normal architecture where we are trying to hit APIs for a different functionality or something, but that also has an integration with LLM. That is the only advantage, right? So that, that's a great advantage because uh, the LLM-based output, you are again feeding into another LLM, right? Right, right. got it. Sorry, Suppose you know, microservices is there. So how am I going to leverage this kind of uh, tool capability into microservices? No, I mean, it doesn't matter actually if microservices or something. It, if you are able to execute the say, API call, that's the beauty of it that you don't really, you're not running kind of uh, application there, right? So the API call is going to, let's say, call these LLM agents or Wave Scrapper or maybe your Redis cache from pulling that data from there and combining it and then finally running it. So it doesn't matter if it is microservice or you are running it in a let's say we are actually doing it in um, you know lambda based uh, services so lambda is run on docker also so if sometimes they are extending the layer side so we kind of deploy it in docker which is you can say like uh, making all the api calls and executing that in a container so, so maybe I can take an example if this is correct or something. I mean, see, uh, suppose a user is there and he's giving a free input, no, a free in, uh, input text. Maybe do a calculation a plus b. Hmm. Uh, so the LLM is asking another you know, LLM agent which knows how to do that a plus b calculation. Correct. Okay. And and this other another user who's saying you know uh, fetch data from a DB. And yes. he's giving a free tip, no? And this LLM knows, okay, now you can contact SQL LLM, which can actually understand the free text and fetch the database. So yeah. basically, it's like a function, but I mean, calling another function, but, oh, but the function also knows but, LLM. Uh, I'll tell you that okay. in function, there is a problem. In function, whatever rule you define, only that is going to be executed. All the parameters and rules are defined. You, you can only query uh, to a particular function. But here, the LLM knows how to query, understand the SQL text, because it is specific to LLM. Exactly. LLM. It understands. Okay. So the agents are, through these LLMs, it's able to understand what is happening from other agents' outputs. Right? OK. Yeah, good. And, and you can actually decide the flow in a different direction altogether. So you are actually able to bring in a lot of patterns, which, let's say, earlier, it used to be, let's say, API calling, but API calling has a whatever you have defined, that's what is going to happen. It's not going to be beyond that. 
yeah but so I mean, that uh, i mean every lm uh, every sub lm has some functionality so we are just trying to reuse it you know in every so scenario i look at it like this so i i look at it not just uh, i mean agents are fine but the problem with llms why these llm agents are required the problem with llms are like let's say they are a big giant you know pipeline okay so the water is flowing and you want you have a bucket you might have a small you know glass or you might have a you know house where you want to have a continuous flow of water now how do you control it right because if you are doing a prompt a simple prompting it's going to give you everything uh, so let's say we are we were working on let's say some pharma background or pharma use case right and pharma use case also you want uh, probably some kind of chemical uh, mixture created right now in that also you might you might go with a specific domain maybe um, let's say pesticides right so if you are going with this kind of approach how do you actually come down to this uh, to make the llm respond in such a way because these llms have the whole internet of information let's say or they are not trained on you haven't done a fine tuning or you haven't really feed it into your own data right these kind of things are going to be difficult to get from the llm so for that you need to have this kind of api calling or agentic workflows which are actually using llms to get you better response yeah, yeah so there are two side of it one is the definitely a tool or functionality wise it looks like a architecture and the agentic workflow and the other thing is about utilizing the llms effectively yeah okay so now my point is uh, in traditional functions uh, some of the uh, you can't encode everything right some of the some of the things uh, can have an infinite combinatorial uh, search space so that is where the llm can be can be utilized right because it has all the knowledge and uh, it can like really really drill down the search space of what you're trying to do yeah so basically this llms let's say whatever it has been trained on it is going to respond on that it's not going to do a, a separate search i think gemini has integrated that feature they also do response on the latest articles or latest things that are happening in the internet but if you see gpt4 if they have got trained last march it's going to respond only till march right whatever happened in april it is not going to get those answers and there could be something that are like proprietary information those you are not feeding into those llm so those are also can how now how do you combine these kind of information uh, different web search results uh, llm has its own uh, knowledge along with your proprietary information Yes, Vinan. But the problem here is, uh, I mean, the number of hits cannot be controlled at some point, you know, uh, with, the, with the LLMs. Yes. And also, even if one uh, agent gives a wrong hallucinating output, it will affect the whole, you know. Uh, no, actually, the, the whole purpose of agent is to reduce the hallucination because your prompts are going, kind of giving you a lot of hallucinations, the simple prompting techniques and even right. complex promptings, right? Uh, the agents are kind of a way to control that as well, because uh, you are kind of uh, actually controlling it through programming logic, if else or whatever. Yeah. So those things we can you cannot do in uh, simple prompting techniques. Got it. I mean, uh, we can validate the outputs. You mean, right? With yes. other uh, Okay. Yes. So maybe you have a you have an agent that validates it. You have an agent that tests it. It, you have agent that uh, you know feeds the results to another LLM to validate it. Let's say if you have a sentiment analysis and you have got a uh, sentiment uh, checked and then you wanted to verify it if it is correct or not, then you feed into another LLM that is going to give you the output for, for that it's valid or invalid. Uh, those kind of things also we can do through these agentic workflows. But it's kind of, you know, I mean, uh, depending more on multiple you know llm hits and all i mean so the count is definitely going to increase with the LLMs. yes okay yeah um basically you are not really uh spawning another llm but 
it's just an api call so you are making multiple api calls uh, yeah, at the sa yeah. simultaneous yeah at the same time yeah so Got it. that 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 one thing that adds is like definitely a little bit of latency you see when i show the demo but the thing is that uh, um the the latency is uh, acceptable if you are getting a good response from this yeah okay so uh um let's say i have a user that uh, it says that i am flying from san francisco to new york for business next month please help organize the trip now can we do this in llm without giving it a proper uh, set of things let's say it doesn't know uh, what is the current fare it doesn't know what bank account or maybe if you are linking any kind of payment wallet and also it doesn't know what is the address that you will be traveling if it requires to put in a lot of things that maybe you do we used to do in rpa automation but it's not just it cannot be possible only through rpa right we also do add a program and for that to do this but now we can do more uh, i would say uh, an additional you know step towards that using llm so if i saw that let's like, say i'm flying from san francisco to new york for business next month please help organize the trip so the travel agent says understood i will plan and book your itinerary according to your previous preferences so you can look at this like the first step is like you know reference to retrieval because it has to get those information Second is the flight and the hotel recommendations and the tool API that is managing managed by the LLM. So all of these are uh, different agents that are managing these um, APIs. And then you might have a photo ID that is getting updated. Uh, the seat selection, that is again a tool API managed by LLM. And then payment processing, the software managed by operating system. And then you have a, a ticket calendar, which is software managed by OS. And then you have the step seven, which is review and tips, which is again text generation managed by LLM. You can see that a lot of steps that are not required to have LLM, and a lot of places we need to have LLM to combine it. Okay. To do, do this whole process of flight booking. So we can actually build a workflow uh, that can automatically, based on your conversation, it can search for the flights book the right seats, book the hotels, book maybe cab or anything if you need. And this is what is kind of automated the whole process, right? It's going to happen soon. A lot of organizations are working on this kind of work, agentic workflows. Okay. Any questions? Yeah, Bhavav. Um, So I had, I had someone talking yesterday. Uh, hmm. So what he did was uh, he, he asked Cloud3 to write a code and then GPT4 checks the code and he was really impressed by the result. So yeah, it is really promising. Exactly. So this is what we are talking about. The multi-agent architecture with multi LLMs, right? Um, the, there's a, there is a, another space that is also get, getting developed in with this is the LLM ops, right? And uh, like we used to have this data engineering side, we have these DAG workflows, et cetera, et cetera, right? So in the LLM ops as well, you have multiple LLMs combine their outputs and inputs to a different, like you create a whole pipeline for that, yeah. So that, that's going to be interesting actually, so. Um, he was actually he was actually leveraging multiple uh, the power of multiple, uh, multiple language models. models. You know, some yeah. some language model is good at something. The other one is really good at something. And, and yes, uh, to prove my point, uh, he was twenty years experience a senior software developer, really a really experienced person, and he was really impressed by the by the capabilities. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. No, so actually the. Uh, this is one valid point that LLMs, one single LLM is not going to solve all the problems. And you see like LLMs are, you know, every six months, three months, there are big LLMs release. And let's say there are a lot of things that are happening with open source. We might combine multiple LLMs and their power as a uniqueness of those LLMs. In the future, this is what's going to happen. Now it may be say, it's same, same, but still, like we see the uh, huge difference between Claude and Gemini and let's say Palm uh, models, um, GPT-4, maybe there are some more or more models coming up. So we can combine these different models with their uniqueness and 
and probably we might see different uh, LLMs at like in in different domains, dom domain specific LLMs also may come, uh, and then it's going to be more interesting. So you can combine, let's say, HR based LLM or a sales based LLM or uh, marketing LLMs, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Okay. So uh, this is kind of uh, the whole uh, construction of the LLM, that perception, the environment, and brain, and the action. OK, uh, you know, uh, Sebastian Raska, one of the Stanford scientists, so I follow him uh, from a long time and see that he is really revolutionary in thinking about these kind of futuristic things that are coming up. And uh, almost seven, eight months back, and last uh, November, uh, he was talking about these uh, LLM-based operating systems, um, which is like AIOS or whatever you call it. Um, and I, I found a research paper in this year that is completely, you know, talking about if you wanted to look at this, I have the link below. Um, uh, so the LLM OS is going to be future operating systems, you know, so our operating systems that we have right now is more like kernel based and you actually combine with LLM kernels, you know, uh, LLM system calls, agent scheduler, context manager, you have everything like in a way you have and you with that you have a operating system kernel that actually interacts with the llm kernel uh so you have a travel agent you have a react agent you have a code a coding agent you have a math agent you have a narrative agent so for everything you have a different set of agents that are basically uh like we have these excel uh let's say powerpoint installed on our laptops Tomorrow it would be installed on a LLM agent and we can call it Excel agent or PowerPoint agent or something like that. Sorry, what was the full form of AI US again? It's basically AI uh, based operating system. So okay, okay, got it. Yeah. AI US, yeah. So in can... other words, uh, can I assume that LL LLM agent is like an app in the Android uh, as same as app in the A uh, system? Yes. Yes. Thank you. You can, you can, you can consider like an app. So it's an app only. I mean, you can say like a, a simple program, right? As a tiny program that is doing you know, some stuff. Yes, Nirish. Oh, no, actually, I wanted to ask uh, you said Sebastian from Stanford. Like, what is his full name or something? So that we Sebastian can also uh, Let me quickly put that. Mm -hmm. Yes. So here you go. Okay. All right. So uh, this is uh, kind of an just an um, understanding and futuristic uh, approach for using multi agents. I think there were some questions on mm -hmm. chat. Did you address them? I saw Sebastian Aska is one of the. No, I, I think I addressed all of the questions. Those are like a little bit older. OK, OK, fine. Uh, Mani Kantan said, let them understand human language, can write code, can API as, and can understand which API to call based on API swagger for specific. OK, are you explaining, right? Mani Kantan, no questions, I guess. that. Okay, there is a question by uh, Sripal. Sorry, uh, how do LLM agents resolve the problem of lack of intelligence from ifs and web stepping? I didn't get the question. Kind of, how do LLM agents resolve the problem of lack of intelligence? Now it's using LLM, right? For that, Sripal. I think you got your answer. Um, So LLMs are the most sophisticated AI, uh, you know, uh, intelligent systems so far in AI domain. So since they are using LLM, they are super intelligent in that way and trained on generalized uh, textual intelligence at least. Yeah. Yeah, I got it now. Thank you. OK, super. So there are different categories that we can actually categorize into different kind of tasks, like let's say Bing search or Ultram Alpha, which is computation or database query like Wikipedia or, or Zip query or Words API or Urban Dictionary or image processing. 
So all these are like the category of things that you want to do. And there could be different set of tools. Like for example, search, we can use Google search or we can use Bing API and we can uh, for a uh, computation, maybe let's say I'm using a currency converter just to get the currencies converted or maybe uh, somebody is talking in Chinese and why want that Chinese to convert into English uh, or SQL query based uh, interpreters or image uh, denoisers. Uh, and then I provide some description like search information by Google API or image or text or currency, con convert the currency. I'm giving that information in text, you know, natural language text. The one other advantage of these is like, you know, uh, in the RPA or in a sales logic, you can't execute a SQL query, correct? You can't execute a SQL query with the, in a much natural la language. So here you can actually write it in, in plain English that I want uh, top uh, currencies in the world. I'm going to query, uh, create a query, SQL query, uh, get that information from the web and going to give you only that specific result. And now you can also format it like you want in JSON format, you want in um, table format, or you want in markdown format, whatever. Or you want the SQL query itself, anything. Right, so this is how we can actually combine the uh, flow, agentic workflows. Okay, so um, I think that's uh, kind of not a lot of theory. I wanted to spend more time in the um, you know demonstration of these apps so that we can kind of understand a bit on that little bit deep depth. Uh, so before I go in that, any questions, anyone? So okay. is there any coding involved? Do we need to learn uh, uh, Python code or something for uh, getting some uh, expertise in uh, LLM agents? Anand, actually, right now, what is happening is uh, these areas are very much evolving and uh, not so much evolved um, unless some, but some of the platforms that come up like drag and drop feature. Mm -hmm. You can drag some agents. Let's say I want marketing agent or sales agent, drag and, and ma map them, and then you can get it done. Uh, but right now, it is more like a programmatic way. Um, uh, we are doing it. But let's say you have some tools, then yes. In future, it is. I'm sure it is going to happen. It will be a tool-based thing, and don't need program. The is uh, to have one coding like Python or Java or something. Python. Anything is fine. Python, Python and any language is fine, but uh, you know, Python is kind of. You see, most of the libraries are built in Python. Now you not get a lot of agentic uh, APIs or libraries built in Java. You might, if you are going to customize built, uh, that's a different thing, but. You will ready made APIs you'll get in Python. So I would say Python is the most preferable uh, language for AI. Okay. Yeah. But enterprise applications, they will still be built in Java. Yeah. So the prerequisite uh, for this course is Python. I, I Python. Must, must have Python must knowledge. Must have some Python knowledge, yes. Thank you. So we are Sir, without to using uh, API. We are designing a Gen AI for managers course, which will not require, you know, coding, uh, you know, expertise for learning Gen AI. Yeah. So that course will launch sometime in May or June. Uh, so uh, because there is a lot of demand from managers and executives or non-coders to learn Gen AI. So we are actually working on designing such a course. So uh, stay tuned. Thank you, Vivek. Yeah. Yeah, because, uh, such only out in the yeah. market. I was just curious. Yes, yeah, so, sorry, sorry, I didn't hear you. I uh, was asking Vivek if such projects are already out in the market. Uh, Gen AI without code. Oh, uh, Vivek, do we have? I think not. No, yet, I mean, right? uh, uh, when you say project, what do you mean? See, a project in Gen AI will involve solution or coding. But executives still want to expertise in Gen AI for implementing in their corporations, right? Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of demand from managers and CEOs to how do I learn Gen AI without doing coding courses? So we are actually yeah. designing such a course. So stay tuned. Oh wow, that's that's nice. That's yeah. Cool. Sir, without using API, can it's possible to predict the prompt engineering? Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. You so you can use uh, 
uh, open source LLMs like Llama 2, you need to install it on your laptop or machine, then you can do that. That would work without API key. But GPT-4, unfortunately, all of these SaaS-based LLMs, they, are, they will not work without API, right, Val? Yeah, the problem with that, suppose that we are going for free open source, then they will pay. I feel and I experience that after two or three tokens, they will expire our API key. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I mean, you know, we are actually using uh, production uh, APIs. So uh, for a trial and for demonstration, you might see like uh, they generally would not give everything for free. You know, these are uh, running on yes. cloud, the GPU. So they're burning a lot of money there. Uh, but um as a student i would say like you can try a uh, llama 2 mistral these are this works without api yeah, it is the free app cost uh, those are free. yes that's why they're open source okay. yeah but you okay yeah. that's like the sql on our different libraries in panda or ml ml we can also use the LLM, uh, llama 2 and other library yeah yeah you can use uh, Llama 2 libraries. Uh, there are different LLMs actually, not libraries, I would say, by, uh, like Python. But uh, uh, you can actually, you have to do a little bit of work there, uh, downloading it, uh, configuring on your laptop, and then make it ready for API calls. So those are a little bit of task there, unless you get a whole <laughs> Yeah. Yes, sir, I felt the problem during the API key. After two or three generate the API key, after that they ping a message that you have expired your uh, API key and you have to payment. There are several offers from them. Okay. Um, yeah. That's problem yeah, so for that. How can you use the free open source library? Such type of library. So they are all in business, so I would say uh, you can try. Uh, you can try as a student, but whatever. I mean, there are a lot of still there. Are a lot of things are free, so you can try out, uh, explore. You can you can see like uh, uh, Langchain. I was uh, exploring a couple of weeks back, and I saw that they also have two or three models that are completely free. You can try out there. Okay, so a lot of things, okay. but yeah, API calling is. I think Gemini is also giving you, I think, 60 prompts free per day. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. So, so yeah, anyway, so we have a lot of uh free resources still. You can create from different uh, account uh, if you want to try out. You yeah, know, yeah, you are right. Just a tip, for but, the... uh, okay, thank you. Sir. Right, so, uh, so like uh, any specification. Uh, I mean, models which we have, right? For example, Java has Java specification, JSRs. Okay. Do we hmm. have any standard specification here at the agent framework level? For a, uh, you mean the, the code APIs? Valid? Yeah, with respect to calling the code APIs, the spe yep. specific standard interfaces. Okay. For yeah, example, there are there are a lot of, uh, like, if you have heard about Langchain, right? So they have built a lot of framework and I mean, they are itself a framework. They are giving a lot of uh, APIs for agentic workflow creation, but I still feel like they are not that great. So in this demonstration, I'm using, um, you know, a different library, um, which is kind of uh, similar to Langchain, but it's focused towards, you know, de deploying LLM agents, Langroid. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I think your question is towards that, right, Bali? Yeah, my concern is there are so many LLMs, okay? Uh, so multiple people will be writing different types of agents now. So if there are any standards set, okay, and everybody is following the same approach of interacting with these APIs, LLM, core LLM APIs, there is then... No, no standard, yeah, right now, at least. It's all experimental. Uh, so no. like, uh, like if you see LangJ, uh, very popular, but worst in production, what we see. So adds a lot of latency, eats up a lot of tokens, which you are paying for. So, but we have no choice uh, unless we want to build our own APIs. Okay, so we don't have any standards. I mean, 
governing body or standards as such? Not, not right now. No. Okay. Not like Java. Place, Java right. is much more uh, mature. It's a mature technology uh, and uh, still an enterprise. If you see enterprise software, I think Java is the first language still. Okay. Good. Yeah. Anyways. Uh, okay. So one, one question. So uh, Llama 2 is open source uh, LLM. Uh, what it requires to install it on the local uh, laptop? Does it require a GPU or we can run it? No, you don't need GPU. I think you need that's around say, six to seven GB, and after quantization, it uh, comes down to three, four GB. Okay. So uh, you just need that much of memory. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, it should run on CPUs. Yeah, oh, only GPU yeah. because you are not training or anything, right? Yeah. Or you're not doing fine tuning all those stuff. Correct. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. But if you want to do PEF or something, then you require a GPU, right? If you want to do some parameter efficient. Yeah, obviously, you need GPUs. That to, uh, that to minimum 20 GB of GPU. Oh, oh my God. Uh, so it will not, not work on 2080 Ti, which is 11 GB. Yeah. So, you know, in Colab, uh, you get free 15 gig GPU, but doesn't work there. Lot no, of I, I, I have a machine which has uh, uh, this 2080 Ti, which is so 11 GB of. Uh, 11, 11, 11 GB. Ah. You still GPU, right? Still, like you can't do fine tuning, but okay. you can easily run uh, in local LLMs. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Because you don't need anyway. It's not going to use that GPU memory. You're going to use CPU. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So there are some questions, uh, Dharmendra. I have no idea of coding uh, and API integration, etc. I is this course going to teach how to integrate APIs in custom GPT or GPT-4, et cetera. Narendra, uh, are you talking about this webinar or are you talking about, okay, so I think Vivek has posted Gen AI course. I think that's more uh, for uh, the audiences who are more familiar with uh, coding and API integration, but we are actually, as Vivek has announced, we are going to have a course for the uh, executives and the managers, which are kind of required no coding experience, uh, but we'll be customizing it uh, in Excel, like I was showing in last webinar, I was showing in Excel how you can do, um, you know, um, API calling without writing code. Just uh, Excel, uh, if you are familiar with Excel, I think most of the managers executed they are familiar with Excel. So uh, that's the most simplest way we can actually learn about complex prompting techniques and uh, do a lot of stuff in Excel itself. Yeah. So you can yeah. check with Vivek. Yeah. Yeah. Thank yes, you. Quick question. Yeah. So uh, if we have to start uh, from tomorrow, uh, and then uh, uh, do you immediately start with coding, or are there any fundamentals you cover? Meanwhile, we can catch up on coding because we did coding on other uh, in other languages, but uh, not to the extent that I'm a hardcore hardcore coder. Uh, basically, we know coding, but uh, Python is a new thing for us. So uh, if we have to catch up uh, with Python, do, do you think uh, uh, one week or ten days we would be good enough uh, yeah. to start with? Yeah, 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 good enough. You don't need to be an expert, but if you are, have done coding in other languages, I think it's easy to understand. The, you just need to know the syntax that how we are declaring functions and et cetera, et cetera, right? So, should be fine. Okay. Should be fine. fine. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We have you know, taught a lot of people who didn't know Python. And if you know any programming language in your past, or even if you did 20 years back in college, yeah. so running a Python Jupyter notebook is super easy. Correct. And if you have done Pascal, C, C++, C Sharp, then Python is like five times easier. <laughs> yeah. Python is easier than Java as well. And by the way, we do have a self-driven Python course in Google Classroom. We'll assign that any anybody who needs, uh, who's enrolled in Gen AI course. Sure, sir. So uh, I'm sorry for asking too many questions. One last question. Uh, no so, problem. We have a confluence uh, and we have to generate, we have to, uh come up with some project where we you leave where we leverage the information that is available in the confluence and make a generative a application out of it then uh do you provide a personal one-to-one -one assistance in case we are doing some specific project see if you join our ai lab community and if you are a core student then definitely you have access to our you know 500 ai experts right so uh, you are added to all those whatsapp group we have a strategic research group multiple product internship groups, right? The central global AI lab group. So anybody who joins our course or community has access to all of our expert group and they can team up and, and, and do a lot of collaborative work. 
and we also have llm jam coming up the later part of april in bangalore in person uh, so anand i know you are from walmart uh, global uh, i mean we have had so many people from walmart who have engaged in our community and research uh, you know uh, on ai programming thank you vivek yeah that helps okay shall we move ahead um... Sorry, and, um, yeah, there are too many course questions. So, <laughs> but the topic today is different. Go ahead. Yeah. So uh, this is Langroid. Langroid is a library again uh, for uh, doing a lot of agentic workflows. I mean, I would say they are uh, they're not a big framework like Langchain. But Langchain has a uh, they are not focused towards uh, agentic workflows. Langroid is focused towards agentic workflows, and we are going to see how we can actually use this library very simple i mean i've just installed it um, on my uh, notebook here uh, langroid and um, after that i have kind of got the open ai api keys there are a lot of api keys that i'm using here um, i'm using redis i'm using qdrunt um, for uh, vectorization and uh, say you know show, storing the document vectors in the qdrunt and I'm also using uh, Redis API for uh, you know uh, quick cache based uh, enablement, and uh, also uh, the OpenAI API keys. That's it. So uh, the first thing that I will be doing is I'm going to configure OpenAI config, and I'm using GPT-4 here. Okay, and you can use Olama or Mistral as well, but for that I need to have something uh, ready to you know use here. So just uh, uh, one second, guys. I didn't run it. Import LM. Uh, yeah, I think I I removed that line code there, so that's why it's coming that MDL. But let me let me run it from here. So I would not really show it in the notebook because you know these all are kind of an uh, while loop kind of thing because uh, it will be a continuous response that I would be responding to that and here it will hang if I run it. So a simple chat agent like let's say chat agent is an abstraction that we can actually get the tool or functionalities added to that. But let's say if you are not adding any functionalities, and if you are going to uh, have a chat agent created, what are we going to uh, do is, here, I'm actually calling this API, defining the context length. Uh, you know, this can be adjusted based on your requirement. I can actually say, I want only 10 context or 20 context. And also the temperature that will determine that how much creativity you want from these agents. And then uh, I'm using a doc, ch a doc chat agent config. So this doc chat agent com config is uh, defined by this, uh, um, you know, this, uh, I'm using this uh, library, Langroid. So Langroid has defined it. But let's say I want to create my own, uh, you know, chat agent, maybe not doc chat agent, maybe uh, uh, let's say, um, you know, kind of, uh, spam removal or maybe um, web scrapper, something like that, whatever name you give. And uh, you, that you can actually define your own API for um, to, to config, configure here. So you can look at this class, docchat agent, which is the main class. And I have, uh, you know, lance DB configuration. Now, lance DB is being used by uh, Langroid, but I can use any other databases. It is by default they are using lance DB for storing information there in the memory. And there are some parsing configurations, like I want to split these tokens, what should be the chunk size, what should be the overlap between the chunks, uh, what should be the neighbor IDs, like store IDs of the window of key chunks, and the minimum chunk characters, discard chunk characters. Th these we generally do it, used to do it in a prompt. Uh, if you remember, or if you have used uh, chat GPT, you will see all of those stuff actually um, defining it in our agentic workflow. So you have more control in a specific output than doing it at the uh, API, uh, the LLM API, because 
that's kind of the main source of uh, you know water pipeline if you are start stopping anything there the rest of the things are not going to get it so you maybe keep that fully open but then you are uh, placing small small taps so how much water you need so i just kind of say that that kind of workflow that we are designing with doc chat agent is just chatting with some uh, pdf and um, you know um, it can be a problem that you are solving through that pdf so i'll run this doc chat agent i have these uh, um, uh, scripts defined here so let's say i'll just run chat.py this will look uh, really good actually uh, let me know guys if you if this screen is kind of visible the fonts are readable yes okay so you can see that what it is showing me is welcome to document chatbot found one collection i named it cell strat so enter one on one to select a collection or hit enter to create a new collection or minus one to delete all collections so that means it's going to you know um, get all those information that i want to extract and uh, i can actually define it in my langride code and um, it's going to extract those information create a new document set uh, chunk it store it into a vector and then it's ready for doing chat or conversation with it so i'm going to let's say um you know creating a new collection here so i'm kind of name it like uh webinar webinar demo okay and now enter input uh, type so it's like what would you like to new collection um yeah that's fine uh, just say enter Well, see if there is any question. Uh, Bhavav, sorry, you will have to use QLaura. They they optimize the things. Yeah, I mean, Laura Q, QLaura is a little bit quantized approach. Laura is no quantization, but I have used all of them, Bhavav. So trust me that it won't work in 11 GB. It didn't work in 16 gig at least. Five billion works, but the responses are worst. So you should go with at least 7b or a little bit bigger model but yeah i mean if you want to just play around that's okay uh, like a few days back one guy tried this syncing of uh, um, llms and uh, the responses were like kind of uh, very vague actually and uh, people were bombarding him saying that very vague response etc et but this guy was like more of an experimental wanted to try out uh, small LLMs, like everything is 1.58 bit LLM, right? You guys have heard about that paper from Microsoft. So and reduce things. Uh, okay, so you can see I have, uh, uh, you know, these different documents, uh, YC Combinator, NewYork.com, Wired.com, uh, different uh, pages that it has got here. Now I'm asking it, uh, can you explain can you guys see this i mean i am just trying ensuring that all the folks who are maybe uh, new to uh, programming in python i think this is understandable right it's not something i'm doing very complex here just checking so please let me know if you have any questions so can you explain about chat gpt yeah so this is not from the memory of it, but I'm, I have given a document. Chat GPT is a blurry JPEG of the web. So, yeah. So, can you explain about Chat GPT? Uh, and I'm um, just asking this question. It's going to run this agentic workflow. This is a very simple chat, but and then we're going to do two agent and three agent communication. So it's going to give me these responses. It's uh, designed to trying to repackage information found on the web by using different words, creating grammatical text that while not, anyway, so I'm not going to read all of this. Uh, I can share that, yes. 
I can share that. You will have to use your own API keys and everything. But yeah, I can share the notebook. OK, so coming out of this, now we are going to see a chatbot that's kind of using. Let me bring it here. So two agent chat. OK, so let's say I want uh, a student um, uh, you know, agent that's kind of uh, you will receive a list of numbers and given a system message. So it's saying that uh, you will receive a list of numbers from me, the user, and your goal is to calculate their sum. So I'm giving an instruction to this agent. However, you do not know how to add numbers. So I can help you add numbers two at a time since I only know how to add pairs of numbers. Oh, it's a small calculator kind of thing, but it understands how do you do that. Now send me a pair of numbers to add one at a time, and I will tell you their sum. For each question, I simply ask me the sum in math notation. See here, if you see, uh, guys, like we are not building any if else logic, right? How do you do it? If you have to build a calculator in Python, you will probably write a if else logic, and uh, that will do the calculation part, right? That <laughs> was saying we are back to terminals. <laughs> yeah, terminals. <laughs> If ultimately, I think the code runs in the in in your shell or whatever you say the process, right? So that is not going to change unless we are getting into quantum computing and all. Uh, for Dharmendra, it's like a foreign language, but I am still trying to make some value out of it. Yeah. So Dharmendra, um, if you don't understand Python, see these. Um, I would say unless you know we are doing a lot of uh, API building or coding, it doesn't, it won't make sense to a lot of us, but it's okay. I mean, um, this is basically, I am defining this chat structure, but I think this is, this part is understandable, like, right? So, which I am basically giving as a context to the um, LLM bot. Um, and uh, I'm saying that, you know, giving an example, let, let's say for each question, simply ask me the sum in math notation. You will understand the example when I run it. Maybe don't need to pay attention to the code that much. Don't worry about it. Uh, so, and once you have added all the numbers in the list, say done and give me final sum. That's what it's going to do. And now I have a adder agent. That adder agent is like another set of tasks. And this is saying that you are an expert on addition of numbers. And when given the numbers to add, simply return their sum, say nothing else. So, you know, uh, it's kind of uh, combining two different chat agents and uh, uh, you know making them talk and do some calculation so if i run this two chat agent so it is uh, going to ask me a set of things like you know uh, what uh, kind of input i want so it says that let's say please provide me with a list of numbers right list of numbers so I can give one, two, three, four, five. Says so one plus two. It's not going to say anything that is the other chat. The student got one plus two. It's it has cached. You can see it has cached. That means saved in memory. Now you know uh, we as a student also will do the same. If I say one plus two, you will save it in your memory, and then if I give you another number, you will be adding with those two numbers the third number, right, and the fourth number, and so on. So it's doing that. I'm just saying enter. So it's added one plus two got three. Three plus three, the next number. Right? It's going to add that. Six. Now it will add with that number the next number, six plus four, which is going to get 10. And then it's going to add 10 plus five, is going to get me 15. So that's it. So once it's done, it's going to tell me that. You know, done. The final sum is 15. Isn't it interesting? This is understandable, I guess, right? So I missed how you started this screen flow. Is this some tool or, or is some custom programming you have done? Uh, the color? <laughs> no, no, this whole interface. What is this? This terminal, Vivek. I see. So you're talking, you're chatting with it. 
I am just chatting with the yeah with the agent in the terminal. Is it not an editor? Uh, it's not an editor. Okay, but it is a UA is good. It's a Mac item two. So item two is a is a you know very interesting terminal, not a boring terminal. So yeah, yeah. so I'm using item two here. Okay. But earlier oh. I saw some tools on the left panel, left side panel. If you go scroll to the left earlier, it, this is a shell. It's, it's it's like a shell editor. But earlier you used some editor, right? I am using PS4. Yeah. Yeah, this one. Okay. PS4. Yes. So this is uh, just to view the code and everything because okay. the terminal it is difficult to view it and also organizing it. And I also put everything in notebook so that uh, you know. I understand we have different type of audiences, and I have to explain sometimes coming here. So it's kind of easier to do that. Uh, I can run it here as well, but I, I can run it here as well, but it's kind of not visually easy to understand. So I'm running it here. Got it. I mean, OK. So this is one example. And then now let's see how three agents uh, can chat. So basically, what I mean here is this is a multi agent. Uh, communication right so uh, if you see that augmenting agents with retrieval right so you might have a private data or you have a new data or a constant data these are the reasons why we actually wanted to do this rag kind of thing so rag is there for some time now but in the rag world it's not just uh, you know uh, you know being dumb and feeding in some document to the llm but it's more about how do you extract the right information from the through rag um because you know even rag has a challenge with the augmentation basically when you store it in the vv8 or any kind of vector databases it's not always uh you know uh, i mean although vector dv guys are the companies are proposing that they are going to you know give you very good uh, um, you know search results but it's not always great results that coming out from that because even you are searching you are doing a cosine similarity match there and uh, the responses are sometimes suboptimal, and you need to optimize those. And you can use actually this programmatic logics to optimize that. And we kind of we have seen this uh, experience with some of our clients where simple rag-based workflow doesn't work. So even you need programmatic uh, agents for um, refining that output, making it much more aligned with what is the business use case. Okay, so doc chat agent and retrieval augment is more like that. You are basically combining the document, chatting with it. And uh, if I wanted to do, let's say, multiple documents such, uh, and maybe one doing extraction from web, another one is doing, you know, document mining, other one is doing the chatting with it, right? So, so these these are the things that uh, we can actually combine and do it in one single chatbot. So this is uh, I'm going to show you three agent chat, which is you know uh, we have a processor, we have an event handler, and we have an pod handler. So so the thing is that this Langroid, which is kind of uh, giving that collaboration of three agents, uh, I haven't written this code. It's from the Langroid, but we can actually use this code understanding of these flows to build out our own set of tools and also have an ui interface out, out of that right so here this tool function calls are like you know uh, mechanism to remind the llms to specify recipient if the if it forgets to do so so a lot of times what happens is prompt and if you have a lot of prompt complex prompts llm kind of tend to skip those prompts and you do not really see what you are expecting from these llms so now this agentic workflows kind of helps you let's say combine a system prompt like you will be receiving a list of numbers from me and this so on so on and then i'm also giving some event agent like it's saying that it's an event handler you will be given a number if it is even divide by two say the result uh, and nothing else and if it is odd say minus 10 right so this is an event handler now here this event handler is kind of a game changer in this kind of workflows what i feel is And uh, the capability is more like uh, it's an agentic uh, workflow API. Okay, so um, while it doesn't solve any kind of specific use cases, you need you can build your uh, use cases based on this. I mean, 
ultimately the whole thing remains same you just change your uh, interpretations here how you want that bot to act like yeah right now it is doing an sum and has an event handler and so odd handler event handler and odd handler sorry and uh, the odd handler is saying that you will be given a number n and if it is odd return n into 3 plus 1 it's kind of a mathematical calculation so i'll tell you where uh, we have used this kind of thing we had a, a kind of an uh, you know excel mining where we wanted to find out that how many of the products are let's say less valuable so if you want to count how many products what used to happen through vector dvs is like most of the times it doesn't give you exact number i'm just giving you one example but there were a lot of things that involves a lot of mathematical calculation there so i was exploring about that and then uh, no matter what i do in prompt it doesn't give you consistent answers so i kind of thought of building a math formula uh, math uh, uh, program and then use that but the thing is that that works but it doesn't integrate well with this kind of llm now this agentic tools what happens that nowadays these llms are also like if you see gemini uh, there is a concept of mi called mixture of uh, experts you know so they actually train these llms in such a way that they are capable of doing such agentic workflow simulation much better than the llms that are not trained with that kind of nature right so also they need to have a tool support so they need to have a support for this agentic because right now gpt4 gives support but not all the models that is giving you agent tool um, uh, execution support right so that also needs to be there okay so this is what uh, the odd handler event handler is three agents and now going to combine it and execute it okay so let me run it here three agent chat yeah so it's saying that please provide me with a list of numbers so i'm going to again give it a list of numbers so you know it kind of cached four here because cache four is even number so for even i have given an instruction it again cached one and it it is going to do in so way that's going to check if it is odd or even and going to finally prepare the response for that all the numbers so now one and two and done so the transformed uh, numbers are 4, 1, 10, 2, 16. Yeah. Uh, and this is done based on the logic that uh, we have given here. Yeah. In those two scenarios. If it is odd, what do you do? And if it is even, what do you do? You divide by 2. So that's what happened to all the numbers. Can you see here, guys? In this. Yeah. Understandable. So we are using three agents to do this. Uh, similarly, we can actually do a lot of complex workflows like you can actually have a sql agent combine it in in future i'm going to do those demos demonstrations see i kind of you know got a notification from vivek uh, last quiz day i would have if i would have got more time i would probably make it much more in the future i'll try to do more simple uh you know a code will be there but i'll try to do for the audiences uh, in mind that different type of audiences coming in our webinar and want everyone to get value out of this but i will do that uh, in future a more uh, you know simpler uh, uh, and but understandable webinars so i think with that uh, i would like to conclude here um, the code demonstration um, if you guys have any questions please let me know hey indrajit arvind here yeah hi arvind so, uh... Yeah, one quick question on that. So regarding the deployment part, right? So for deploying any kind of uh, LLM-based model, let's say uh, we'll not go into a heavy one for the lighter one also. Let's say you're building a chatbot or an information retrieval system using some small LLMs. Okay, let may, may, let's take an example of Distilbert. So what yeah. should be the infra requirement for that? I mean, in terms of yeah. GPU memories and what are the things we need actually? You don't need GPU, but uh, I mean, if you are running yeah lms right distilled and all uh, if you're not doing 
fine tuning all in we used to earlier also do that in cpu it runs fine and if you have a, a fair amount of uh, multi threading uh, let's say um, 18 core something so then it it and depends on type of heavy load that you are giving to that because i actually da have worked on this kind of scenarios before uh, where we used to have these uh, transform based models but that basically primarily heavy on the threads uh, mm -hmm. memory is not much required so it's fine okay and and let's say that if you want to deploy something with memory heavy i mean uh, where uh, how much will be the need of memory if, let's say that you want to use llama llama 2 uh, for yeah. that yeah. yeah so basically you if you see that that uh, 3 or 4 gb is minimum that uh, the size of the llm that what matters if llama 2 is let's say 5 billion parameters going to be uh, depends on quantized or unquantized let's say but okay. normally it is going to be multiple of that number into two so if it is two bytes per uh, parameter that okay. much is going to be loaded in your memory so that's why gpu memories are kind of required to be double of that so if it is 7 billion it's 14 gig minimum required and if you are doing training and other stuff then it's going to add for optimizers and other parameters like activation functions etc okay another 10 gig so it would be around 25 gig 25 memory. Yeah. Okay. Fine. That makes sense. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Do we need an event handler? Can't LLM act as reason? No. Sorry, Ekta. I think event handler is. It's not event. Uh, event handler is um, is my name. I can give it like a uh, uh, event number handler. So this is not the event handler like as an event handler of, uh, you know, in programs. Uh, Ekta, I think that makes sense. Any insights on how to integrate this for chatbot transactions? Chatbot transactions, I didn't get that. You meant um, Chandika. QR code deactivated? Oh, that's strange. <laughs> so no worries. I will uh, directly share my profile. Just if you guys want to connect with me. So uh, yeah, so I think I was asking uh, Vivek, can we share the notebook link with all the members? Is this related to our product? No. Uh, then it's okay. Then you can share. It's an open open source demo. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So Chandika transactions like using dialog flow agents could we achieve those? Yes. 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 We can. Um, actually, these are. You, you can see these are chat agents. Uh, we can have like you know we can actually build our. I I think that would be the only way <laughs> to build our own customized uh, agents. Um, because uh, what we are doing here is in this code whole code. Uh, not a lot of things that maybe the Langroid is uh, doing all the wrapper around the LLMs and APIs. Uh, that's one of the advantage because if you have to build APIs for all of the different tools, it's going to take a lot of time. So that way it is fine. But uh, you can actually build a simple chat chat uh, dialogue flow agent as well. Yeah. Yes, uh, Saprateef, right? If I'm pronouncing your name correctly, I'm sorry. That can, you, can you explain how, how do you handle multi-tenancy when you're building this kind of uh, like agents? Multi tenancy in, in terms of transactions, are you talking about? Or yeah, yeah, yeah. See, these are all deployed in an API, correct? So, uh, like we are using um, for this, we are using lambdas, right? So, mm -hmm. the thing is that lambdas are anyway, if you are building a, a sync lambdas, they are basically can handle millions of requests in a in a second I no no say. so so every company would be having a different uh, kind of uh, every tenant will be having a different kind of knowledge base right so like if you are doing a multi tenancy how do you isolate that yeah so that is again the the workflow that can be maybe designed or has to be given as a customized option on a security. just like okay. we do it in the data engineering world for atl okay or, okay, okay okay yeah right Otherwise, it's a SaaS product, so you cannot do mm. much. No. <laughs> yeah. 
got it got it okay vaibhav you had a question um yeah so uh, there is this new framework called dspy so how does uh, uh, that differ from llama index or langchain uh, uh, if you have knowledge about that which which one dspy dspy I it is orchestration language yeah i haven't seen check that dspy yet <laughs> sorry uh, people are really talking about it so that's why i, I thought, okay. okay so no never that's... mind i'll ask in the next session it's about llama index right so yes sure in case if i have certain purpose of 10 pdf files and want to try multiple gpts will a particular type of tokenization work on all gpts or tokenization is fine you can you can use gpt based tokenizer you can have your own tokenizer that's fine but the thing is you that you can try the imagine view you can try no kb minor yeah yeah yep you can try You can just uh, give it a trial, like how 10 PDF works. You know, so in our Imagine View platform, we have you can actually upload. If you want to try out with multiple PDFs, so you can actually upload here multiple set of PDFs to uh, chat with. Yeah. Yeah. So Pratik, do you have any other question? No, no, not really. Okay. All right. So uh, I think we are on time. Uh, I, if any other questions, let me know, or else we can conclude. Okay. Any other questions, folks? So okay. Uh, thank you all for joining. Excellent presentation, Indrajit. Uh, very very interesting, cutting edge topic. So in our Imagine View product, also we are planning to develop, you know, corporate or enterprise agents for various workflows. If you want to collaborate with Cellshare, do reach out to us, uh, and uh, so you'll work on such cutting edge stuff. We have our new Gen AI course launching tomorrow morning, IST hours. So uh, enroll if you are interested in the certified version of it. If you just want to attend live classes, they are offered free, only for class recordings and certification. There is a fee. If you don't know MLDL. we have a pg course which includes ml dl and gen ai course and product internship of course we are pleased to announce our new open source project called learnview.ai i have shared the link in the message uh, where our course enrollees will be working by contributing products to developing ed, ed tech tools using gen ai and llms think of uh, you know ies gpt you know iit gpt sad gpt and so forth right or gre gpt so we'll be developing tools like that with the help of our course enrollees and eventually inviting global developers to help us in this open source project for educational revolution so thanks a lot indrajit excellent presentation thank you audience for joining and your rich questions uh, see you uh, see you in our next webinar which starts in an hour from now on llama index so thank you all thanks indrajit thank you Bye. everyone